Hello guys, and welcome back. And welcome back to a challenge, right? So I've not done before, and a lot of you will question us for it, because you know how much I rant and rave on about good quality parts, get the best, all this, right? I'm going to go against my word on this occasion, because I'm going to do a cheapest chips challenge on a car, right? I'll show you what it is in a minute, but I'm going to set myself a challenge of 300 pound but i'm gonna try and do it for 250 right and it's to buy a car fix the car mot the car and tax the car for a full year so by the end of it i'm hoping for 300 pound i can have a car which is but well, reasonably Fixed. There will be other things I'm going to do, but reasonably fixed to a safe standard, clearly. MOT'd for a year and taxed for a year. So you pretty much guessed it's not going to be a two litre or something. No. And it's even going to be something because you know I have issues with getting attached to cars. I bought me PD 130 Golf, in my opinion, rough as it gets, to hack it off through the winter. But I like it. It's actually one of my favourite cars I've owned in a long time. It's got faults and all the rest of it, but I like it. And I can't bring myself to... I don't abuse cars. I wouldn't even abuse a car I don't like. But I like it too much to hack it off to nothing. Not that I ever think I would, but I'm using that in a broad spectrum. So to do that, I have to buy a car that I don't really like. That I never have liked. My mum actually had one brand new and I didn't like it brand new in 2008. So I have to have a car that I personally don't like and I'm going to give the car its opportunity to impress me. I'm not sure it will and if it doesn't, I will personally crush the car myself. I know contact in a scrapyard who would let me personally crush it. Because um, if I don't think it's nice or I don't like it, I don't want to sell somebody something. Excuse me language, I'll, I'll change it. That's pap. Okay, so here we go. What do you think it is? It's not one of my worst hated cars, but I have, I'll just quickly go to this video without trying to get the car in the video. I have just had a bit of a madness moment and I do actually love the way, actually it's not there, my dad's just took it away. Damn, I actually wanted to get a photograph of it. I'm trying not to get the car in the photo. Um, yeah, one of my most hated cars, I've just driven a one, an automatic, I'll say it, a Nissan Juke. Uh, a 1.6 petrol automatic Juke, top of the range. It drives nice. It was a, oh, some, what was it? Uh, I think it was about a 2016, so it's quite a new one. Still hate the way they look, still hate everything about them. But if I just closed my eyes and was just in front of the driving, the, the steering wheel, I loved the way it drives. I'm not quite sure I'm going to go along the lines with this car. So what is it? What is it? What have I picked up? So obviously starting, if buying the car. So, here we go. A Corsa D. Now, I don't like red cars, particularly to start with, so it's a red car. And the first thing you'll pick out is the bonnet is pink. That's because he had a replacement bonnet and somebody's done a bit of a bad paint job. It doesn't look that bad from this angle, but I will say, though, the rest of the car is perfectly nice and red, not even starting to go pink, bar the old bits of lack of appeal, which is to be expected of a car of this age. But, yeah, this bonnet is going to be my first port of call for free of charge, to try and fix it which is clearly just going to be some red uh, polish but just spit on your finger a bit put it on and i think it might actually come up okay with a bit of a buff so that shouldn't be too bad on the bonnet uh, the bumper here it's uh, i don't know it's had a bit of a nudge or something but again this is a bargain budgeman budget challenge so i'm not bothered there's a little tone eye thing missing here again I'll go to a scrapyard and try and find a one. But I don't particularly care, guys, because I don't really like these cars, so I'm not going to have any love for it. But I am going to try and get it sorted. But there is a lot of positives with this car. First up, it's not an 08 plate, so forget that. It's a private plate. I need to try and remove those without damaging them somehow, which I'm a little bit reluctant. I think this one might come off okay because um, of those metal type, so they can't even flex like plastic. I'm a little bit concerned at that. Uh, so, yeah, around the car... Like I've said, that's my challenge. So clearly you'll have guessed it's a 30, well, it used to be 30 pound. Now it's 35 pound 
tax. So that's going to obviously help the Wardsme Challenge, isn't it? And it's the Eco Flex, which of course means it's definitely not the 1700 Isuzu engine that I highly rate, it's the 1300 Fiat engine that I dislike. So yeah, it's a car that I've never really liked from new. It's an engine that I've never really liked from new. So it's going to have its opportunity to impress. If I don't like it, like I've said, <laughs> for what money it's going to cost us, I'll personally scrap it myself. But there's a lot of positives. So that's enough of the negatives. What are the positives? First positive is it's got four brand new, like almost brand new, Kumo tyres. On relatively looking with a good clean, good enough condition alloy wheels. So there's a positive straight up. Four new tyres, that saves me having to spend. And brand new discs and pads, which look to be premium quality, because they're coated on the front. So bang, straight away, new brakes for new tyres. That's thumbs up from me. Drums on the back, nothing too much to worry about. Now, bodywork wise, these normally rust terribly on these back arches. And it's a tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little bit. It's very good condition. A little tiny little bit down here, which it's solid. It's just, I'll, I'll treat that just to not let it get any worse. But bar that, these are usually getting quite hard up on an 09 plate by now. That is, I'm not going to lie, damage here and there. But again, a little bit of um, red dye uh, polish. In fact, that is quite recent. In fact, to be quite honest, that's actually coming off on my fingers. I think he's just done that not too long ago. I did notice it when I checked the car over. So he must have done that like within the last few days before handing it over to me, which is a shame. But hey ho, it is what it is. Around to the side, and again, this side, there's no rust at all. The bumper, the usual course, a bumper sticking out a little bit. Um, the spillage of diesel has obviously stopped this one from ever rotten. None whatsoever down there. All the doors perfect. And to be honest, it's just dirty. If we give it a rub, it is actually nice and red under there. It really is. So, bar the bonnet, it's kept its colour nice. It's the active spec. I'll get to that in a minute as well. So, yeah, we're not getting off to too much of a bad start. Bodywork, to be fair, it's probably in better nick than me golf. Um, mainly, there's no major rust on it. That's the, the key thing. All the, I think this will come up lovely with a good polish with the red dye in. So, obviously, I've gotten the car for 100 quid. Cheap as you like. That's purely been through helping the guy. That was a Renault Megane... Uh, I don't know what it was, Tom Tom edition. One of my customers was selling it and I helped him out. He was wanting to spend a lot of money on a car, but he's realised so many cowboys out there, so much pap, I'll not swear, so much pap out there for nearly five grand for what you can probably have picked up years ago for a grand or two. So he was happy enough with uh, the Megan. But the problem is, this car, obviously for 100 quid, it's not just, uh, you know, ready to roll. It's run out of MOT and it's failed its MOT on a couple of items. So I haven't got the sheet to show you, but what there were was, I think a back shocker had burst and it was leaking. So that's the sort, which I need to get ordered. And also I've noticed the, when I switch it around, usual Corsa D, I don't know if you can see them there, the dust boots. Actually, I think that side's okay, but this side isn't, I don't think. Yeah, you can see the dust boot kit. Uh, so what, I'm just going to get a pair of shockers. I know that's totally going against the grain of um, the right way that we do things. As you can see, shockers down there. One's just burst uh, off a Fiat. But go on to cheapo eBay and get non-branded stuff. Again, totally against what I tell you to do. But this is a challenge of how cheap I can get the car sorted. For about 55, 60 quid, I can get a pair of shockers with dust boot kits. I can't even get one for near 60 quid, a cheap one from our suppliers for that. So it's going to get that done. A pair of rear shockers. Doesn't need a pair, but a new pair of. Sorry, guys, I had to stop recording because we have grown adults around here who decide to act like kids, as you can hear in the background. Crazy, crazy place, this. So, anyways, what I want to try and do is make it as cheap as possible. So, yeah, a set of rear shockers and dust boots. It would be stupid not to. The, it also failed on a major leak on the exhaust, which is the flexi pipe, which again, a full exhaust will cost a lot of money, of course. So, what have I bought? Never done this before, but I'm willing to give it a try. Obviously, it's untested to me. I've got no idea what it's going to involve, but it's just down here. 
I'll just switch it round. It is a yeah, universal, but it's actually properly measured to this car. Flexible joint. Uh, so yeah, two clamps, flexi joint. And it is properly made for this car. And I'll just show this to this company here. This guy, very good company on eBay, sells them for all sorts of stuff. You do have to measure the pipe on the car. So that, I think, come to the grand sum of something like £14 or something. £14, £15 for argument's sake. Um, that's that. And also, as you know, set of number plates. I can't believe it. Some company online. Um, CZ Performance. 12 quid. Posted. Last set of plates I bought was about 30 quid. You do have to send the documents, not send the documents, but a photograph of your logbook and all that, but it, it is all totally legit, MOT, standard, legal, black border on it, and it's got all the proper stuff on I thought there would have been so-called show plates, but they're not. They are, I'll just face it, this will be reversed to you guys, but it's got the name there, but the BSA U number at the side, so they are all fully legal. So that's also thumbs up. So a set of plates... And the other thing it's failed on is the subframe is slightly hold somewhere. You get them for about £120 brand new, but I have heard somebody has got one, which I can have, a second-hand one. Again, it's not the way I would normally go. I would always fit a new one for the work you've got to do. But it's 100 and odd quid for no reason. So if, if, if the second-hand one's solid enough, it'll go on. But I need to cross that bridge when I come to it. I'll, I'll have a look, see what it's like. But bar that, that's it. Um... It says the wishbone, you just can check the MOT thing yourself, it says the wishbone arms are corroded but not, it, it is, an, is an advisory. So for that, I need to obviously have a look at them, but it's advised, not a fail, so there's nothing to do. Basically scrape them down, put a bit of coating on them. Again, the person who's got the subframe may have the arms with it. Don't know what condition they are, no idea. But again, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, what else? I'm trying to think, yeah, so it's the 1300. It's not an 08, it's an 09. Still got a £30 tax, £35. But when these little 1300 Fiat engines have a DPF on, they are absolute awful. The A13 engines are awful. They get the six-speed gearboxes, which are a version of the M32, which are terrible. And also the DPFs on them. Main reasons with these engines for a diesel, they're a 1300 diesel, but they only take three litres of oil from empty. So it takes no time at all. That's a, in case you don't realise, that's a very small amount. I mean, for example, a one litre EcoBoost, which we all know, three cylinder, one litre, they take five litres of oil. This is a 1300 diesel. Diesels dirty the oil very badly, which is the re main reason why most diesel engines take more oil than petrols, because diesels pollute the oil a lot more through blow-by from the cylinders. It, it's all sorts of stuff. But anyways... That's why the knack up when they've got a DPF on and they're doing regens, failed regens, as you know, the diesel gets the oil gets diluted by the diesel. When you've got, say, five litres in there, clearly that will last longer than three litres and you find the turbos blown, God knows what. Luckily, this is on the changeover yet. Still the EcoFlex, but it's the pre-DPF, so it's got a cat. No DPF to worry about. So no nonsense with all that. And so it's the Z13, and it's had a new turbo on, um, with a receipt a couple of years ago. It's another thumbs up. So, yeah, and it's the five-speed gearbox, which is the good one, the one you want. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all adding up to be not a bad car with not a lot of money to spend. Like I've said, up to now, I think we're pretty much on my way to the £300 boundary, maybe £250, um, to get a car fully taxed, fully MOT'd, bought and paid for and fixed for less than, I'm hoping, 300 quid. If we can, we'll scrape 250. So I need to still buy the shockers. I haven't bought them yet. What I need to do today is fit their number plates because, like I said, the guy's wanting them back. But I'm a little certain, like I've showed you, the front ones are screwed on but stuck on as well. But unfortunately, the back ones are stuck on. And these metal plates do not like that is absolutely solid. In fact, and as a massive, I'm, I'm going to have to send the guy a photograph of this. I, I don't even know if he realizes, but. It's that they're knackered. I, I wouldn't be putting that on my new car. It's got a great big, as you can see, uh, hole in it. So, yeah. I might even just send them a message with a photograph of that and not even waste my time and then twice the time to try and take it off without damaging it 
when it's damaged anyway. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of answered my question to that. Interior-wise, it's a bit meh kind of thing, but I'll be putting my dogs in it as well. But he's had his dog on the back seat. He has kept it nice, but it, it does, like, still have dog hairs and stuff. Am I going to take it to a car valet as... Not really. I don't see the point because my dogs will be going on. But as you can see, there's a lot of dog hairs about. But it's not horrendous. He's kept sheets on the seats. It's definitely been kept very well for what our classes, what most people do, have dogs in the car. It's like really clean. But it just needs a bit of a professional vacuum cleaner on it. But does it need to for what I need it for? Probably not. Uh, but it most certainly, uh, it's not had a hard life. It's had a few bumps and knocks, but... That's to be expected. The boot as well is fairly clean. Nice spare tyre on the bottom somewhere. Yeah, steel wheel. There's a lot of wheel nut in there, but they've thankfully been taken off and put in the bin. And I immediately congratulated the guy on who I've had told him to do that. No lock and wheel nut in the bin. So, quickly to the drive. Well, we'll go under the bonnet and then we'll go up the drivers, which is at the other side. And then you guys, I'll do a follow-on video from this when I get a bit of the work done on it. Because um, obviously I'm not going to record fitness at a number plate and all the rest of it. Oh yes, that was the other thing I forgot to mention. Engine management light on was a fail. Because remember, if it was an 08, which it isn't, be a pass, 09 it's a fail. So I already know what that is. It's the, it's the EGR valve clogged up. So we're going to unclog it and blank it off. Before anybody says, you can't do that for the MOT, you can't see the EGR. So you wouldn't know if there was a blank and plate in it. So therefore, it's not part of the MOT. So I am just going to put the bonnet up, so bear with us. So there is your Z13 DTJ. The Z13 part's the good bit because it means it's got a cat and no DPF. The DTJ means it's the 75 brake horsepower one. The DTH is something like a 90, but these can be remapped. To nicely up to about 100 brake which is quite a lot to 110 for one of these and what i might even do if i can't get the jar fully cleaned out and blanked i may just get it mapped out as well as a stage one put on but then again we're talking probably more money there than i'll have paid for the whole car taxed and mot so we shall see i think i'll go along the cheap bow lines of simply taking off the the, the valve and cleaning it out but but with a five hour scanner from eBay, when you knock the light off on this car, which I did for the guy, it lasts for weeks. Not days, weeks, sometimes months without coming back on. So clearly, I'll be knocking it off. And then when it goes in for MOT, the light's off. And as long as the light stops off through the MOT, it is totally above board and legal, which I, must, I would imagine millions of people do. Because with a lot of cars with faults, the light doesn't come straight back on. So all you need to do is before you take your car in, people knock the light off, and as long as it stays off with the MOT tester, not a problem. And as we know, it's an EGR valve. There's no, I'll start it up in a minute. It doesn't even matter because the emissions on these are spot on because there's no smoke or nothing. So really, engine-wise, I've had a full service last year. All I'm going to do is an oil and filter change because it's quite important on these because, like I've said, they suck up the oil, something rotten. Um, but I will say on this one, Yes, it's black. Yes, it's a diesel. But when you rub it on a bit of uh, paper, or even just a bit of cardboard like that, it's not horrendous. Yes, it might look black to all you guys, but I work with diesels all the time, and you know when it's really bad. It's due a change, but it's not terrible. Um, the fuel filter, you can see, that's new. That's certainly not getting changed. The air filter, I'll be fine. So it'll be at most an oil and filter. Now, I'm going to suggest something absolutely despicable, what, what you'll all say, Dan, you can't do that. I've got a car coming in next week. It's an old lady's car. I swear to God, she doesn't hardly use it. And we keep telling her every year, you really could get away with not doing it. But again, it's still on oil, regardless of miles, every 12 months, which hardly goes anywhere. And there's times you're dropping the oil out of it, and it's like as new as the oil you're putting in. I would never ever recommend this, but I'm doing this as a bargain basement challenge. I don't intend selling this car. This car is going to be on the fleet purely because it's £35 tax. So it can sit there for three months and never turn a wheel. And I'm, what does that work out at? Something like a pound a month, two pound a month for the £35 tax? I don't know. Um, I don't even know. Does anybody pay £30, £35 monthly? I wonder if anybody actually does that. Must work. I'll have to find out when I've MOT'd it to be able to tax it what the amount is um, but that's the main reason I've got this car in case you're asking why I've had a massive change around in the fleet 
Uh, the A6 is gone. The ML ZX off the road, forget them. Golf, he had to stay. A6, I did a deal with Chris with the, you'll have seen the video, the imported Primera Camino. That car's too good to run through the winter, especially when I've got the Golf. But I can't rely on the Golf as my sole car, so I am putting the Primera off the road through the main part of the winter, and it's just going to stay on my drive where I can keep the battery charged, keep it running. And the only car I'm going to have to use is my Golf. I like it, it's great, but that might, it does need a few jobs done to it where it might be off the road for a little while and it's handy just to have a car you can jump in and get to where you need. Cheap to run, cheap to tax. So that's the purpose of this, to just keep it as me all year round car. And like I said, if it sits for days, months, it doesn't matter because it's not costing us anything but a couple of quid a month in tax. So that's the top and bottom of it. I am looking around, but it's got little cracks and stuff like that, but we can't be too um, precious about it. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. But what I, like I was saying, if this car, as long as the oil is not smelling too badly of petrol, but a little bit of petrol in a diesel oil system is actually good because it acts as a flushing agent. Honestly, you buy engine flushes, it's glorified mixed up petrol, diesel and kerosene. It's all it is. So what I might do to flush this out is, it's only three litres, is use that oil, I'll get a new filter and drain the oil out and put that oil in just as a temporary thing and then if I like the car and I get on with it in a few more months time I might do a full engine oil change as in like with brand new oil but trust us, I'll show you the oil that I collect um, it, it's worthy of doing but it's all in the nature of trying to keep the challenge of getting a car for under £300 taxed, MOT'd and fixed for the year we shall see. It might not be possible, I don't know. So, I'm going to end the video here. There's, there's no point in showing you all the underneath and everything, because I need to sort all that out myself. I need to order the shockers. But all I'm going to do today is swap the number plates over. Like I said, the back one, I don't even see the point in handing the guy it back, but I will if he wants it. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Do the flexi when I get five minutes on the exhaust, and then just leave the shockers and assess the subframe but I need to go and see this subframe anyways the second hand want to see if it's any good so we don't know it's going to be a work in progress so I'll catch you all soon let us know what you think leave a comment below yes I know it's not my type of car but that's the whole point I wanted something that I don't particularly like and that, that way I'll not get attached to it I'll not start spending money on it as long as it's safe as long as it drives and starts and stops that's all it's ever going to be I'll never probably ever like it like I will the Golf but I'll use it so yeah, leave a comment, let us know what you think, what shall I do with it? No, I'm not going to sell it on or anything, I am keeping it, so there's no point in anybody asking, can you buy it? Because what I've done is, I never talk about expenses, what I'm basically telling you is, I'm going to have a car which is all done and dusted for 300 quid, so what would be the point in selling it for 300 quid? It wouldn't, so therefore it's not going to be for sale, nor will it probably ever be. So let us know, what would you do to it? Any top tips, anything you've spotted, what I should do? For cheap, remember, cheap things. Um, and have I made a good choice? Just leave a comment. If you haven't already done so, hit the like, and it's two seconds to hit the subscribe, and it does help me figures for the channel. So I thank you, and again, I thank everybody. Kit's been on again, Fiesta Man, Adam, I think your name is, you left it, but I don't know if I'm getting that right, I get mixed up. And Kevin X Type, uh, thank yous again for your donations uh, via super thanks and buy me a coffee. I have got all that collected in a pot. I need to somehow figure out on buying me a coffee how you even get the money out of there to pay it in. I don't know. I am going to try and sort that one out. So I thank you all and I'll catch you next time.